Welcome to Medica Nova Wellness Studio. I'm Angelica Maria Koch with your educational videos about optimal health and the most innovative and holistic approach to your well-being. Today's theme of our discovery series, Healthy Family and Soul Medicine, is not the most stimulating one, but a very important one. There's so many people are affected. Here we'll show you how you can heal and find relief from constipation, either with your newborns, your children, your teenagers and yourself. In this video, I will share with you many juicy tips how you can meet this challenging situation with natural and effective therapeutic tools. To stay updated with more inspiring videos, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel, share and like it with your friends and family and have a look at my website medicanova.net at the online academy where you will find comprehensive home study online courses in first aid homeopathy and quantum healing. And if you're interested in a personal health consultation either for yourself or your children contact me at health at medicanova.net. So it is estimated that constipation now accounts for about nearly up to 3 million doctor's visit per year. I think it's even more. Mostly women are affected, you know, more than any other population. And during these years of my uh, personal uh, practice, I've helped countless of clients with gastrointestinal ailments and constipation was definitely one of them, so I know it well. But what is constipation? Well, it is defined as having difficulty emptying the bowels, of course, and it's often associated with hardened feces. But when constipation occurs, several other things take place within the gastrointestinal tract. For example, there can be a slowed movement of the stool passing through the colon, or you don't have enough feces you know, in your colon to stop the peristalsis. Maybe you don't eat enough or irregular eating patterns. Or there may be a delayed emptying of the colon from the pelvis or a combination of both. If you suffer from irritable bowel syndrome, that can add to it because now we have an alternation of loose stool and constipation. We also see symptoms like abdominal distension, gas, pain, headache is very much related to constipation. Often people say, oh, I have this regular headache and it's really related to their intestines which are not working very well. Nausea. How about the bleeding after passing stools? We have the anal fissures, the hemorrhoids, the piles or the burning pain, which is so characteristic with passing stools. Also, I've seen abdominal hernia associated with constipation, diverticulosis or diverticulitis, which is an inflammatory part, all can be uh, stemming from the simple symptom of constipation because of straining so hard. Here are several factors that might be the contributing factor to your constipation. The first one is, of course, diet. You want to get rid of all the processed food, the carbs, the sugar, the unhealthy fats, synthetic additives, you know, all of that. But it's not just the diet. The most important one on the list is actually stress today. Stress has a huge impact on our hormonal system. It changes our hormones and on the production of neurotransmitters. So very important because your brain is directly linked to your digestive system. Enzyme production, all the inflammatory conditions within the body are often related to stress. And the entire functioning of your digestive system. You maybe have also inactivity, you have a sedentary lifestyle, you're lacking exercise. So it's good just to 
get up after 20 minutes from your desk, shake your body a little bit, move around to get the bowels going. Certain medications can be a big factor here. I would say antidepressants, antiacids, uh, calcium on iron supplements, all of that can contribute to constipation. Imbalance of an intestinal flora. Very, very important. So we have healthy bacteria and they live in the gastrointestinal tract and you heard maybe about probiotics. These are helpful bacteria, right? And we need that to regulate the bowel function. One of the reasons why fiber of your diet is so important because it serves as a prebiotic. It's almost like a food for the probiotic or the helpful bacteria. So really bringing more fibers within your diet. If you suffer from thyroid or hormonal imbalances, constipation is a given. I would say um, diabetics even, women through menopause, premenstrual tension, uh, people who suffer from eating disorders, um, all that can really add to the constipation, particular thyroid disorders and in this case hypothyroidism. Neurological illnesses, Parkinson, multiple sclerosis, all of that can of course um, you know, add to not being able to empty the bowels. I would say magnesium deficiency. It's an electrolyte which has a direct link to our muscle tension and functions and if you have a deficiency of magnesium, you probably suffer from constipation. So here is a just magnesium supplement in the evening, which alleviates the bowel movement in the morning. If you travel a lot, if you go on international flights and your stomach doesn't know if it's day and night, that can add to constipation. The elderly, you know, or hey, don't forget lack of sleep. Oh my God, I've seen it so many times. That can affect your digestive system. But out of the whole list, in my experience, it's always the healing triad of the liver, the stomach and the colon. Now, when you go back in previous videos, look at the, my playlist, you find a video about the toxic stress cycle where I really go in depth about the healing triad of the liver and the colon, but that's really the hub where all diseases start. So all illness starts with your digestion or the lack of it. Now your digestive system is the very first entrance door of your present and future diseases of your life. No. Our food is our medicine and our medicine is our food. It's a statement which we so easily put under the carpet. But in its essence, it's the very truth of your well-being. Now, once the stomach is unable to clear the ingested toxins, it will pass them on to the small and large intestines. So the toxic stress cycle is really more like a domino effect where you have a bucket of accumulated toxins which is passed on from organ to organ within the system. And in this case, it goes from the stomach to the colon. Now here, the incomplete digestion as well as the toxic overload results now in fermentation or putrefaction, we say, where the food just stays there too long and it starts rotting and decaying. Now, when your bowel flora colonizes, you know, with the most beneficial bacterial cultures, that's not a problem, right? It can be easily remedied, but these natural processes are not happening so easily today within our bodies anymore. So our colon's flora should be around 85% of beneficial bacteria such as maybe Acidophilus you heard about, Lactobacillus, Bifidus, Bulgaricus, and about 15% of sort of potentially harmful ones in the form of coliforms like Streptococcus. We need this ratio to really create a healthy bowel flora. 
Unfortunately, today this ratio is flipped and we deal more with a large amount of harmful bacteria rather than beneficial ones. New research studies have shown that as newborns find their way through the mother's birth canal during the birthing process, that they gather beneficial bacteria via the placenta and the vagina skin that colonize the mother's digestive system in the womb. So it's very important that the mother during the pregnancy really takes care of her digestive system. Although identified as bacteria, but these microbes are life-saving and really set the foundation of a healthy digestive system for the future of your child. So probiotics are a must during pregnancy. When the toxins from the colon then enter the portal system, your liver and gallbladder is the next one in line who then receives the truckloads of toxins. Then we have gases, chemicals involved as well. And maybe you remember that I said it before, but the liver is the most important detoxification organ within our body. It's about 50,000 you know, uh, tools or, or tasks uh, to take care of during the day. And then we come in with a whole truckload of, of toxins on top of it. And what we have is a congested liver. And then the whole cycle starts again. So if you really want to get rid of your long-term and maybe chronic constipation, you have to clean out your liver, stomach and colon in a nice and simple protocol and I can help you here. Contact me at health at medicanova.net or contact your personal healthcare practitioner. But that's really the key here. Now in this video I will also share with you how we can relieve constipation among newborns and children. Overall, in general, I want you to add and increase your water intake. In the evening, you maybe want to soak your dried prunes with water so they're nice and juicy and squishy in the morning for your breakfast. That helps to loosen the bowels as well. Prune juice comes to mind too. Uh, more olive oil, bring in much much more fats into your body but you know people say oh, I don't want fats now bring in the olive oil bring in the lubrication within the body probiotics I mentioned in the form of organic yogurt or kefir magnesium rich food I would say um, fish and green veggies and nuts these are all uh, great as well as supplements baking soda one teaspoon of baking soda in a glass of lukewarm water in the evening helps to loosen the bowels as well. Then let's have a look, and that's the most important part in this video for me, is the mental and emotional aspect, which really play a huge role with the symptom of constipation. Constipation and the metaphysical understanding is an expression of a reluctance to give things away. And that means mental emotion as well as physical. So here we have the desire to hold on to things. That's why I can't let go of the feces. And here it can touch the problem and the area of avarice or greed, you know, on the material level. We are hanging on too tightly here to material things and are unable to let go on the physical level. So let's go even a little bit deeper for your understanding to really see why the colon is related to this theme. Now the small intestine corresponds to the conscious, the analytical thinking. And the large intestine therefore reflects the unconscious part, sort of we call it the underworld. And the unconscious has always been regarded symbolically as sort of the realm of the dead. And the large intestines is similar to the realm of the dead for 
in it are to be found those materials that cannot be brought to life, like the feces, right, for example. So it also is a place where I mentioned before the fermentation starts to occur, uh, the putrefication, the, it just sits there for too long and it starts to rot. But fermentation in itself is a process of decay, of dying. And if the large intestine is now the bodily symbol of the unconscious, so the feces corresponds to the contents of the unconscious, therefore. And the constipation is, you can see, is related to the fear of letting the unconscious contents see the light of the day. What does it mean? It means like, I don't want to look at my emotions. I'm fine. I'm, I'm okay. And I don't want to look at this thing which really gives me an, un, an uncomfortable feeling. I just don't want to go there. It's too hard. Right? So it festers down in the intestines and it sits there and it ferments and it doesn't want to come out. It means you are then unable to leave your contents. It means the unconscious thoughts or the conditioned behavior even, you know, the limited self-belief system which we all have behind you. And it shows us that we have difficulty in giving and letting go and that we are hanging on both to material things and to unconscious contents which we do not want to come to light. I hope this gives you some food for thought because constipation is not just a physical expression. It's a result of something else and usually there's a story behind. Let's have a look at my most favorite homeopathic remedies here and also natural supplements which you can apply to really find relief of your constipation. Again, these remedies are available over the counter and accessible at your local health food store or over the internet even. They come with a potency, it's a number behind the name, usually 6 and 30 only. They're sort of over-the-counter allowed potencies. The first remedy is called Nux Vomica. It's a great and effective remedy for just general constipation. But in homeopathy, we want to be a little bit more specific and we look for the keynotes of this particular symptom. And in Axwomica, it's about you have um, the insufficient stool and you have an ineffectual urging. So what does that mean? It means you can maybe go to the bathroom five times a day, but you feel like you're never finished. Right? There's still something there. There can be bloatedness, there can be gas also. Now, the personality which fits Naxwomica remedy is a go-getter, a workaholic, you know, on the go, all the time, never has time, you know, grabs the food on the go, uh, never assimilates food and definitely doesn't allow oneself time to spend too much in the bathroom unless there's some magazines and they get, you know, stranded and read the magazines for hours. That's a sign that somebody has constipation. But they, these people will probably not allow that. They're just on the go. It's great for a sedentary lifestyle where you have lack of exercise. A fantastic remedy if you have piles and hemorrhoids and that maybe can contribute to the constipation if you travel internationally. Uh, it's a fantastic remedy for your travel constipation. I would say for newborns or uh, children who suffer from just constipation where you feel like mm, it's not really coming out totally, Naxvomica 6 one tablet daily for a week would help very nicely. Stop if there's any improvement setting in. That's the keynote in homeopathy. We, wanna give, we don't want to uh, give more tablets. And with adults, Nux Vomica 30, one tablet morning and evening, um, maybe for seven to 10 days. Of course, always contact your personal healthcare practitioner or me at health at medicanova.net. I'm happy to help here. 
The next remedy is called Alumina. It's very much indicated for extreme constipation where there is a total absence of an urge and your child or you haven't gone to the bathroom for days. And that's not a good situation because now the toxins start to build up. So the leading sort of guiding feature here is there is a total absence of the urge and extreme sluggishness of the intestines. It's just nothing is working. Even with the children, you have to resort to mechanical, you know, ideas to get the stools out, right? That's a lumina situation. The stool is only passed when there's a large accumulation of fecal matter happening within the intestines. Even excessive straining can happen with soft stool, right? By then, of course, the anus will be affected. There will be a burning going on. And also the child is afraid even to uh, let the stool out because it might hurt, right? That in itself can be very difficult. So it's a great remedy indicated for children, also bottle-fed babies, right, who are having now constipation. You maybe want to check out your milk formula and, you know, find a different one which works better. Elderly people, you know, who really have no urge and can't go. That's really not a good sign. So make sure that you start um, supporting this process with natural and therapeutic tools. And Illumina is a great remedy. With newborns, I would say Illumina 6, one tablet daily for a week. See if that makes any difference. And with adults, Alumina 30, one tablet morning and evening for seven to 10 days and see if this opens up the bowels. You maybe heard about the bicycle leg uh, practice with the baby. So you take your newborn baby, uh, put it on the back in front of you and you take these little chunky little thick legs and in circular mo movement, just start mimicking the pedaling of a bicycle and that opens up nicely the whole abdomen. You also want to massage your baby's belly and a warm bath helps as well, but also check out your milk formula. You may want to switch to another one. Like a podium clavatum, I've mentioned this remedy so many times before, but comes here again. Very helpful in the case of constipation associated with a lot of flatulence. It's a liver remedy. So again, when your liver is congested, you will have burping and flatulence. And lycopodium can really alleviate the constipation when you feel like there's a lot of gas happening. It's like, call it incarcerated flatters and like trapped gas. Um, lycopodium 34 adults, uh, morning and evening again for 10 days. I think that could be a great help here. Our last time we today is called Silicea. And you maybe laugh what I'm just, uh, share with you, but happens quite often. They have a partially receding stool, call it a shy stool. So they are on the toilet, they are expelling their, um, their feces, but then it recedes back, right? It's coming half out and it's going in. That is a fantastic remedy for that. Silicea is basically made from the quartz crystal. What happens is there's a constriction in the anus, so it pulls the feces back. And there can be exhaustion because it becomes a very uh, strenuous effort constantly to push out the feces, but then it slips back. Of course, at that time, you have a lot of burning and smarting pain around the anus, right? Because you really try hard here. Constipation of that kind of a nature I've seen a lot with women before and during their menses also. You know, have a look with that. Of course, there are many more other homeopathic remedies on offer, but in this video, I just want to give you sort of like 
pointers or suggestion to get you going, you know, to get you more confident to say, I can deal with to not just always become dependent on the laxatives, which really don't help. You know, they just make the intestines more sluggish. Um, so if you want to have more advice on that, contact me at health at medicanova.net. But today to my favorite natural supplements is called, of course, uh, and it's always based on clay. The product I'm mentioning to you is called Intestinal Formula Number One and Two. It comes from the American Botanical Pharmacy. Uh, the website is herbdoc.com from Dr. Richard Schulze. I'm not affiliated to the company. I don't get money by mentioning it here in this video, but it's a great product I've used for decades in my practice and it really works. It's a powerful intestinal vacuum and it draws out old fecal matter, but it does much more. It draws out toxins, poisons, bacteria, drug residues, as well as heavy metal like mercury on lead, which is really um, health damaging today as well. Inflammatory uh, situations and it's also a soothing agent. Now, what is it made of? I swear on bentonite clay. It's the best intestinal cleanser. But here we have a combination of charcoal, of marshmallow root, of slippery elm, which is mucilaginous. It sort of coats the lining of your colon. Apopectin. Uh, we have peppermint in there. We have some cayenne pepper, flaxseed, psyllium seed, all the good stuff which help you to train your colon again to become really strong and uh, knows when and how to eliminate the feces in the most rhythmic way. Now when you have excessive constipation, I would say start, particularly the adults I'm talking about here, um, start with a protocol where you use the intestinal formula number one and two. So the two is about one teaspoon several times a day of the bentonite clay and the charcoal and the other ingredients is mixed with juice and water. And in the evening you take a capsule of intestinal formula number one to just soften the stool to get it out the next day. It's not a laxative. It's based on plant derivatives which help to just loosen the bowels. For maintenance, I would choose intestinal formula number two, one teaspoon in the evening with water or your favorite juice as uh, just forever. It just cleans out your bowels very nicely and uh, you will really uh, support your constipation in a way that your body learns again how to use this muscle in the most rhythmic way because a peristalsis in your colon has to do with the longitudinal muscle and the round muscle of your colon and they work sort of in a rhythm in a dance and if you can't do that then we have accumulated feces we have constipation happening and when you take clay or this kind of natural substances the body learns again how to move in a rhythmic a really beautiful dance and your health will blossom because all diseases start in your intestines. Never forget that. So I hope that gave you food for thought and great tips to find relief with your constipation. I know you can do it. So till next time, much love. Take care. Mm -hmm.